Hey, you're watching Hymns of My Wake. I'm Jacob, and today we're gonna continue with my uh, my Folkfinger record series. Um, got six more releases to go through today. Um, all really good, good releases. What we'll be listening to in the background, whether you like it or not, we're listening to King Apathy, Wounds. Um, King Apathy released this one in 2019. I believe it was their their uh, last album, and I think they they called it quits, at least with this band. Um, and what a way to go out. This album's fucking phenomenal. Just amazing post-black metal. Amazing artwork to go with it. And that cover is just awesome. And then, show the insert real quick. A little more cool art on that. Put out on um, Life Force. I was lucky enough to find this at the local shop, so I didn't have to pay the the shipping to get it from overseas. So that was awesome. Um, King App. This was actually the only album that they released under the name King Apathy. Um, the the prior albums were they they went under the name. Thrawn and Kind, or Thrawn and Kind, something like that. Um, those albums are really good too. I think there's two full lengths and maybe a split under that name. But, yeah. If you have a chance, I'd pick up a copy of that. It's a grade A album. Anyways. Let's get into what I uh, brought you here to discuss. That's uh, that's Full Finger Records. Let me get that download card out of the way. So, first, first release we're going to talk about is Sanguine Moon. The release What Shadows Once Hid. This uh, Sanguine Moon is kind of a dark ambient dungeon synth kind of crossbreed project. Um, I couldn't, I there's so much influence from both. I think I. I it's tough to call it one or the other. It's just kind of a perfect uh, a marriage of the two. Here with this little card in there. It's too bright, but there's a, some writing right there. Um, yeah, just real, real raw, real dark stuff. Um, these guys are from. I want to say Portland, Oregon, if I remember right. Um, but yeah, really, if you're if you're into dark ambient or dungeon synth, and are, well, depends on the kind of dungeon synth. If you're into the real medieval kind of go out and LARP, whatever dungeon synth. This might not be for you, but if you like the more dark, raw uh, dungeon synth, and you're into like the dark ambient, then this is definitely a EP to check out. I believe it's an EP. It's one 
about 20, I think it's about 20 minutes, one 20 minute song, that's all that's on here, but really, really cool. And then, the next release is a little box set of two albums, this is Battle Daggereth, um, here's a little box set, crack that open and got two albums. What else came in this? Oops. Oh, on this side. Move my download card. Came with a, a sticker and a patch. Yeah. And then the, the two albums. Start with number one I believe they're concept albums that are kind of they go together it's one's the one's the number one and the other one's a number two that's start the title uh, this one's one dark dragons of the cosmos Co-released with Out of Season. There's the first one and I'm sure you're kinda of getting an idea of what you might be getting into here with the with the artwork on these, but um, it's real kind of cosmic atmospheric black metal number two is frozen light of eternal darkness really cool really cool art on that one Um, real, you know, it's not like, um, a lot of, not like the light-hearted, uh, frolic in the woods with the, with the deer, kind of atmospheric black metal. I'm sure you could tell that by the packaging. It's real cold, um, spacey. Um, raw, but not like you know your black sleeves raw. It's not super, super raw. It's got a good amount of production, so it's um, listenable. I don't know how what you how you would describe that, but very. It doesn't sacrifice any listenability with the kind of bit of rawness that it has that just gives it that more cold um, almost like lonesome atmosphere like you're in the deep outreaches of you know the universe by yourself you know just freezing cold I don't know that's how I would describe the music. Then it'll kind of tease you. It'll kind of there's a couple spots where the music starts to build up and be kind of has some like hopefulness shine through. And just as soon as that starts to glimmer through, it comes down and crushes you even harder with that that cold darkness. Really, really fucking cool how they did that um, yeah that's Battle Daggereth with um, Dark Dragon of the Cosmos and Frozen Light of Eternal Darkness um, I don't think you can get the box the box set of the two I think it's pretty much uh, impossible to find at this stage but you can get both albums on CD and I think even record if you look hard enough. CD is easy to find, I think. 
Um, who put it out? Avant Garde Music, I think, put it out. And they still have CD copies available of each. Um, so, yeah. And. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The next up, going more back to the. The, the ambient music, the synth music. We have, let me take it out of the case. Really, really there. Varkana. Let's see if I can get rid of that, that glare. Um, with right. Yeah, Varkana is from from Iran, um, and this is some real uh, kind of minimalistic, ritual, ritualistic, ambient music. Um, really. Kind of a total opposite from that Sanguine Moon release. Um, real kind of, you know, light. Um, very, yeah, very, very much a ritual ambient album. Um, and uh, you can find a cassette release from Fullfinger. It comes with a bonus track, um, which is, is a really good, um, really good track. So it's worth worth finding the cassette if you can. But then the next album we have was either my, I believe I'll call it a tie. It's tied for my number one album of 2018. 2018 or 2019? What is it? 18? I think 2018 is when this came out. Now, now I'm mixing myself up in the head. But this is... Sojourner, uh, The Shadowed Road. And that glare is killing me on these lighter color covers. Um, yeah, this is... I mean... It's almost like summoning worship, but it's not. It's not. It's got a much more um, accessible sound. Not that you know summoning isn't accessible, but this is more so in the more polished, um, I guess you could say mainstream sounding. But um, yeah, it's epic borderline black metal um, I think it it's best it's be best just titled you know epic metal um, came on this real dark blue shell and also came with a little lyric booklet. Um, this is definitely a an album to you know sit down, and follow along, follow along with the lyrics, and um, kind of tells tells a story. Uh, at least that's what I picked up. I don't know if they meant for it to be a concept album. I think they did, but to me, it's you know a kind of a linear story and 
the, the last song, the, the title track, is Shadowed Road. Probably a top five all-time favorite song for me. Um, it's really the, the song that makes the album for me. Just a epic conclusion to an epic album. Um, they put out another album last year which was also really good but for me it didn't didn't quite reach the level that the Shadow Road did um, I don't know that they'll that they'll ever talk this album but okay two more okay next up Funerary, funi, fun, funerary descent of chasms beyond. Um, I guess the best way to describe this one is blackened funeral doom. got some black metal riffs on top of you know like the the more super slow atmosphere and everything that you get from funeral doom um, and then it just sporadically hits with the, the the black metal riffs on top of it the black metal guitars on top of the more funeral doom elements um, and you know when you think of funeral doom you usually think of you know the super sorrowful sad you know sound but this one goes in a different direction this is really really fucking haunting um, nightmarish Funeral Doom. Um, kind of the, you know, turn off the lights, turn off the lights, uh, put on a couple candles, and just be fucking absorbed into the just sheer terror of the album type type thing. Um, yeah, that's. Funer funer funerary descent of chasms beyond. Um, forgot to mention on the on the Sojourner. I think you can still get um, at least CD copies of this from. I believe Avant Garde put it out. Um, they since moved over to Napalm. But I think Avant Garde still has the rights to that one, so they do all the re-releases and what whatever. So I think you can still get copies of that. Um, Farcana and Funerary Descent, unless Folkvanger has copies available, which they might. I would definitely look into it if you're if you're interested. Unless they have copies, your best bet is going to be um, to look on Discogs. See if we can find a copy. Okay, and now, last but not least, we have Bjorn's Hall Estuary. This is some more epic. This one's definitely, definitely black metal, epic black metal, um, Vikingy black metal. Um, recorded on some on old, older equipment, so it's got a more old school sound to it. Um, I'd say it's got a lot of Bathory 
a lot of Bathory influence on this. Um, it's a fucking fantastic album. Um, what else is there to say? Uh, they are um, from New Hampshire, if I remember right. Um, but it sounds more, you know, more like it'd be from like Norway or Sweden or somewhere up there. It's got that more Scandinavian sound to it. Um, but yeah, control the cassette. And the CD copies of this, I, I think, are still pretty readily available. I think it's another... No, I don't think it was Avant Garde, but I, I know their band camp, I think, still has copies of the CD. I thought I had a copy of the CD. I was actually going to play that, but it wasn't where it was supposed to be on the shelf. So, threw this on instead. But, yeah, don't... Don't uh, overlook this. This is a phenomenal fucking album. Especially if you're fans of, you know, Bathory. I'd say stop what you're doing and go check that one out. But, yeah, that's the, all six releases I had for today. Um, we'll try and keep this video a little bit short and sweet. More than uh, I usually do, so... We'll see you guys next time.